In this lesson, we're going to be talking about case structures and how to use them with different data types. Case structures allow us to branch off certain sections of code, executing those parts while ignoring the rest. They are the equivalent of if, else, or select statements in other programming languages. Let's start with a blank VI and create a simple case structure example. What we are going to do is create a VI which determines whether the AND or OR of three Boolean controls is true or false. We will start off by placing three Boolean controls on our front panel for our three inputs. Now let's place a toggle switch for our selection. Disable the label and enable the Boolean text on the toggle switch. This allows the user to see what he has selected each time they flip the switch. Finally, we need an indicator to show the result. We'll use a string indicator, and you'll see why later on. Moving over to the block diagram, we'll arrange the terminals neatly to make room for our case structure. The case structure can be found in the sub palette or the quick drop menu. Like the while loop or the for loop, we must click on the block diagram and drag our mouse to resize our case structure. The first thing you'll notice is the green box on the left side and the menu at the top. The green box is the selection terminal. This box determines what case we are in depending on the input to the terminal. The menu at the top allows us to navigate through the different cases. In our case, we will use the Boolean toggle switch to determine which case runs. Since it is a Boolean, there are only two possible solutions true and false, so LabVIEW has set these as the default of our case structure. Referring back to our toggle switch, if the Boolean value is true, we want to AND the three values. So let's place the compound arithmetic function inside the true case. Clicking on the symbol inside the compound arithmetic function, we can change it to AND. and drag it down to have three elements. We can now wire our three Boolean inputs to the terminals. We now wish to format the result, which is a Boolean, into a string. For that, we'll use the format string function, wiring the output to our indicator. Notice here that LabVIEW has automatically created a tunnel and it is an open box. Further, if we take a look at the run arrow, we see that it is broken. This is because we have a missing assignment, meaning one of our cases isn't wired to an output. When using the case structure, the output must always have a value, regardless of what case is running. Right now in the false case, there is no defined value being passed out to the result. Observe when we finish the code for the false case, the tunnel is satisfied and the broken arrow disappears. Now if we were to select values for our controls, the result should be correct. In this lesson we learned about case structures. We learned that case structures allow us to run certain segments of code while ignoring the rest.